It's been a difficult year for the U.S. economy. While consumer spending remains strong, and there are nearly twice as many open jobs as people looking for work, inflation is at its highest level in decades. So in this video, we are going to discuss how does raising interest rates control inflation? Now before we get into this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below saying I subscribed, I will try my best to reply to as many comments as possible. The Federal Reserve, which sets the nation's monetary policy, took another step in its attempt to curb those economic strains on Wednesday by raising interest rates three-quarters of a percentage point for the fourth time this year. High rates of inflation have persisted despite the Fed's efforts so far, but officials hope the move will slow down the economy and set off a cascade that leads to lower consumer prices, which have climbed on everything from groceries to cars to rent. Without price stability, the economy does not work for anyone, Jerome Powell, the Fed's chair, said at a press conference on Wednesday. Despite all the inflation, longer-term expectations appear to remain well anchored, but that is not grounds for complacency. The longer the current bout of high inflation continues, the greater the chance that expectations of higher inflation become entrenched. The move brings the Fed's policy rate to 3.75% to 4%, its highest point since December 2007, which economists consider the restrictive territory due to the heightened risk of forcing the economy to slow down too much, causing a recession. Even so, interest rate hikes are known as the central bank's one major tool to lower inflation, which it does by raising the cost of borrowing money to curb the demand for goods and services. Economists won't know until later if the Fed's moves were successful or not. In the meantime, consumers and businesses will find it more expensive to borrow from banks as interest rates rise on everything from auto loans to mortgages. Why does the Fed increase interest rates? The Fed hopes its rate hikes will temper demand for consumer goods and services by making it more expensive to borrow money. The philosophy is that if goods and services become too pricey, less people will buy them and sellers will have to lower their prices to retain customers. For example, a car dealership may be forced to slash the price on a new car if potential buyers are unwilling to pay the extra interest rates for auto loans. It may sound like a simple formula, but the reality is much more complicated. The Fed envisions bringing inflation down to about 2%. Its preferred pace of price rises across the economy, from its current rate of 8.2%. The challenge is that the Fed doesn't have many levers to pull to achieve that goal. A host of factors are combining to make the Fed's fight against inflation particularly difficult. Job gains have been robust in recent months, and the unemployment rate has remained low. Inflation remains elevated, reflecting supply and demand imbalances related to the pandemic, higher food and energy prices, and broader price pressures, the central bank said in a statement Wednesday. It also pointed to Russia's war against Ukraine, which it said is causing tremendous human and economic hardship. The war and related events are creating additional upward pressure on inflation and are weighing on global economic activity. The economy is facing a number of constraints beyond companies overcharging for the products they sell, including shortages of semiconductors and available workers, also impacting consumer behavior. The Fed can discourage people from getting a new auto loan, but it can't boost production of semiconductors. Some economists warn that it would take a giant decline in demand to bring the economy back into balance, but that could lead to a recession in which more workers would be left unemployed. Still, the Fed views raising interest rates as the best method when it comes to fighting inflation. While elected leaders have a number of tools at their disposal to combat rising prices, like raising taxes to curb spending, such policies often take too much time to implement and are likely to be met with some resistance. Since interest rate hikes go into effect immediately, economists say it has potential to more quickly help control inflation. In 2022, the Federal Reserve raised its key federal funds rate seven times, something it hasn't done as aggressively since the 1980s. The central bank hopes that by doing so, it can slow down the economy enough to moderate price growth. When you get a loan from a bank, for example, when you're buying a house, an interest rate is attached to that loan. The interest rate is the price you pay to borrow the money. 
banks need to borrow money too. Instead of borrowing directly from other banks, they look to the Federal Reserve, America's central bank. Its primary role is to provide a safe and reliable financial system for the U.S. by maintaining deposit accounts for banks. When banks need to borrow money, they look to other banks that have deposit accounts with the Fed that may be in a surplus. And just as with any other loan, the banks are charged an interest rate for borrowing money. It is this percentage, known as the federal funds rate, that the Federal Reserve helps set with its interest rate announcements. How the federal funds rate influences parts of the economy Banks pass on the cost of a higher federal funds rate to their customers when those customers want to access regular lending products. The best example is the prime rate. This is the interest rate banks charge their most creditworthy borrowers, like large corporations. For several decades now, the rule of thumb has been that the prime rate is equivalent to the federal funds rate, plus 3%. So, with the new federal funds target rate at between 4.25% and 4.5%, the new prime rate at the upper range would be at 7.5%. The percentage difference is supposed to cover the cost of processing a bank loan. What impact will it have on consumers, investors, and businesses? Rising interest rates can have a number of effects on market conditions and the economy, some of which are positive and others that may carry some risks that are difficult to bear. Interest rate hikes create tighter financial conditions during which credit spreads often fall, equity prices and stocks drop in value, and the strength of the US dollar increases. Such financial conditions can hurt the economies of other countries, as their currencies may be weaker than the dollar. It can also put a strain on retirement savings and other investments if stock prices continue to fall, though Wall Street analysts say the stress shouldn't last forever. The S&P 500 fell 0.5% after the Fed's announcement on Wednesday. U.S. Federal Reserve Board Chairman Jerome Powell speaks during a news conference following a meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee at the headquarters of the Federal Reserve on September 21, 2022 in Washington, D.C. U.S. Federal Reserve Board Chairman Jerome Powell speaks during a news conference following a meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee at the headquarters of the Federal Reserve on September 21, 2022 in Washington, D.C. Those with credit cards may also see rates rise due to the pinch of higher borrowing costs. Average credit card rates are currently at 18.7%, their highest level in 30 years, according to Bankrate. Some Americans may find it more difficult to buy a house this winter, even though the housing market is starting to ease up. The average rate for a 30-year fixed mortgage, the most popular home loan, was below 4% in late March, but had topped 7% by late October, meaning some first-time home buyers who may not have enough money saved up could be pushed out of the market altogether. But despite the risks, economists say the interest rate hikes are necessary to lower the burden on American households. Consumer prices in September were 0.4% higher than in August and 8.2% higher than the year before. Some projections show that prices may continue to rise into next year. Powell, the Fed chair, acknowledged that the path ahead could be difficult. It will take time, however, for the full effects of monetary restraint to be realized, especially on inflation, Powell said on Wednesday. He added that, at some point, the Fed will slow the pace of rate increases. Bright MLS chief economist Dr. Lisa Sternvent said that consumers, businesses, and investors should keep an eye on next Thursday's Consumer Price Index, which tracks inflation, for signs of whether the Fed's interest rate hikes have been working. If inflation remains stubbornly higher, the Federal Reserve will continue to aggressively raise rates, she said in advance of the Fed's meeting. Under this scenario, mortgage rates could climb to 8% or beyond in late 2022 and into the first part of 2023. Fed officials have signaled that interest rates could be raised again in December and February before hitting a pause. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more interesting videos. Stay safe, and we will be back soon with another video.